Kremlin spokesman comes out publicly, shocks the entire media by saying not only did Prigozhin not go to Belarus like they all claimed, they just said that, in fact, he's been having private meetings with Putin. Now, we had all these people, like the last time we were on here, like Jennifer Rubin and Malcolm Nance and others, and they were telling us that this was a civil war. Well, what kind of civil war do they have where it's, you know, it's a, instead of, you know, Gettysburg and Appomattox, they're just walking into the, you know, the main headquarters and shaking hands and talking. Tony, why did the media get this so wrong? And can you tell, give us your assessment of what's actually happening? Well, I, look, I'll be right up front. I am mystified, as most others, about what is actually going on. Uh, I always refer back to the Cold War. The Russians, for better or for worse, were masters of deception. Uh, Jack, you and I uh, have a counterintelligence and, and foreign intelligence background. One of the things during the Cold War the Russians were very good at is essentially uh, sending in walk-ins. You know, we were trained to deal with walk-ins, that is to say, people who pretend to be or are leaving their side, in this case, Russia, coming in to say, hey, we want to spy for you. We, we have information critical. And uh, there's uh, ample evidence that something was going on. I think Prigozhin did have contact with U.S. intelligence in some form before he did what he did. The question becomes, did he try to actually deceive the U.S. and West, saying that he's going to lead this revolution and see who came out and wanted to support it? Uh, obviously, we do know that the Gang of Eight, the intelligence folks of both House and Senate uh, uh, were briefed by the Biden administration on something before Prigozhin did what he did. The question becomes, did Prigozhin approach them and say, have I got a deal for you? If you pay me, I'm going to lead a revolution against uh, Putin. Uh, come along with me. I think that's a distinct possibility based on the amount of secrecy that surrounds whatever was going on. I don't know that. Uh, but what is important is to acknowledge when we don't know something and start uh, providing or pr projecting aspirations onto the audience. We all have responsibilities. I run think tanks, you're a member of the media. I think we, we owe it to the American people uh, an honest answer or an honest I don't know. Instead, I've seen members of the on the left side, left wing media, project their aspirations. And I remember back when this started, you had the, the two names that I think we often mention, Malcolm Nance, Jennifer Rubens, to, to name a couple, who were saying, oh, this is the beginning of the end for Putin. It's all over. There's going to be a mass revolution. And we, you know, we think that Prigozhin is going to replace Putin. And uh, first off, if that was true, Prigozhin is, I think, uh, if not as aggressive, he's probably more aggressive. He was arguing for a more severe, more aggressive approach to taking out uh, the Ukrainian forces in Donbass, uh, the other members uh, who would have joined him on this would have been more severe, more aggressive. So the idea of replacing Putin with 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 Prigozhin or others was never something I thought was a good idea, just because, you know, I don't think you want to see that level of chaos. The other thing to remember, if it was true, if Prigozhin really was trying to take out Putin, Jack, you and I both know we don't want Russia to become, quote unquote, ungoverned. Uh, ungoverned space, uh, especially uh, in, in, in something as big as Russia, with nuclear weapons could be uh, tragic. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I and some other folks have looked at is loose nuclear weapons. Uh, the moment you have an arsenal the size of, of Russia left somewhat ungoverned, un, 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 uh, uh, restricted, you could have nu nuclear weapons going loose, which we don't want. Uh, even if you only had one or two percent of the nuclear arsenal left into the hands of, of uh, oligarchs and, and criminals, you, you don't want nuclear weapons being sold on the black market. It would result in some very bad things. So the aspirations of the left to see Putin dethroned uh, and the potential chaos it would, co would cause is not something in anybody's interest. So I always caution people on projecting uh, their aspirations rather than reporting on the facts or simply saying we don't understand something, which in this case, I think most of us are saying we didn't know, but it looked like this. And one last point, uh, we do not, we the United States do not necessarily understand wh how they do business within the 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 the, the, the Russian uh, Republic as it is it is not truly a democracy it's a bunch of uh, 
uh, criminals, uh, thugs, oligarchs who basically have a country that they use for their own purposes. Uh, and I've said a number of times that this is more like uh, the, the Tony Soprano, the Sopranos meets the Hunt for Red October regarding how they do business. And it, it's something that's different than our system. We cannot uh, project our system onto their system and somehow try to make sense of it. It just will never work.